Hey everybody, so today we're going to get into some leather care. Tips, techniques, how we do things. Um, we offer a lifetime warranty on all of our products and being in business for 15 years, we end up every once in a while getting a very hard-worn wallet back. And we're gonna do a re and a rejuvenation on this wallet today. So we have a, this was a natural veg tan bifold. You can see it's got a lot of beautiful wear on it. And the thing with leather is that the leather is always going to outlast the thread whether it's synthetic or not. That's just the way it goes. So we build our wallets in a way that this isn't a bad thing. This is, I think, nine years old. And what we need to do is just cut out all the stitches. We're gonna clean it, we're gonna condition it, and then we're gonna sew it all back together with fresh thread and it's ready for another nine to 10, 15 years. So let me cut out all the stitches and we'll have all the pieces and I'll show you how we're going to condition it. So you'll notice in the construction of this wallet for our production pieces, we don't use a lot of glue. And this is one of the big reasons why, because it makes repairing a wallet super, super easy. And it's just not necessary that when you're using something like main thread that can take such a beating. This wallet's gonna look great and brand new when we're done with it. So I'm just going down the center here and I'm cutting all the saddle stitching. You can see one of the good things about saddle stitching, and this is the reason why, if you watch some of our other videos, we will go so far as to die cut and use power sanders, but we always saddle stitch, because you can see, if I cut one stitch, well, let's, let's get to a corner here. It'll be easier to show you on camera. If I cut one saddle stitch, the reason it's called saddle stitch is because it was, on it was used on saddles. And the reason it was used on saddles is because it's field repairable. So let's say, for instance, I have a stitch break. If this were machine sewn, I would pull it and the whole thing would come undone. However, if I'm in the field, all I'd have to do is pull these two tight, clip that short, clip that short, melt it down, melt it down, and you have a seam that while not totally repaired, because it's not backstitched, we'll get you home. So that's why we prioritize saddle stitching over anything else, really. So now that we have the whole wallet taken apart, we're gonna look at all the pieces. Oh, let me put that here. And um, seeing a wallet taken apart like this really illustrates what you do and what you may not have to condition a lot. The thing that we see a lot is that people over condition the outside of their wallets. Believe it or not, you very rarely, if ever, should have to condition the outside of your wallet. And the reason for that is you're always touching it with your hands and your hands have oil. So this piece of leather feels nice and supple. It's not dry. It feels very um, healthy. So I'm not actually going to do anything to the outside of this wallet. The same goes for these two pieces. Now I might add a little bit of our Aussie Pace Wax, not ours, but Aussie Pace Wax. I might add a little bit of this because it feels a little bit drier but I don't feel the need to go too crazy on it. The pieces I am gonna focus on are the interior pieces that are under pockets because these are feeling a little bit dry and if we add some moisture back into them, it will continue to keep them nice and healthy. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set these pieces aside and I have just a very lightly dampened cloth. And we're just gonna go through, you can use saddle soap and scrub if you want, that's never been my preference, but you can see we're barely removing any dirt. There isn't much dirt to remove. We're just going to go through and lightly dampen or lightly clean these pieces of leather. So on our interior pieces, now that they're dry, they're feeling a little dry. And especially when you wet them down, you're going to pull even more moisture out. So my first thing that I'm going to do, and this is only a two-step process, I'm going to use pure liquid mink oil. Now, with liquid mink oil, it will darken the leather a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're only going to apply a little tiny bit to a, a, piece of, a, paper, a paper towel and we're going to let it apply a pretty damp coat, but you don't want to soak it and you definitely don't want to dunk it. I've seen people fill tubs with mink oil and dunk things. For some things it's appropriate, for this it is not. And it'll lighten up from this. It's not going to stay this dark, but it will darken the leather a bit. But I feel as I go through and see how this wallet is aging, 
I feel that it's appropriate and it will sort of even out the color a little bit without making it too dark because some people who carry natural veg tan wallets like to see the difference in color between the outside and the inside. It shows all the patina that you've gotten over the years. So that's all we're gonna do there. And that is just a penetrating liquid that's really gonna get some good fat content and moisture into this leather that will stay there for a good long time. And it will dull it down too, so we're gonna lose a lot of our shine, but that will come back within a week or two of using the piece again once we're all sewn back up. Now mink oil also does some cleaning. You can see I'm pulling some dirt off of this. So you can use mink oil to clean leather as well. Just know that if you scrub it and you keep soaking it, you're gonna darken the leather a lot and it will not come back. Um, Neat's foot oil you could also use. I prefer mink oil because mink oil gives off a more reddish tone. Neat's foot creates a more yellowish tone. And the front of our wallet, which is the patinaed part, is showing a more reddish tone. So I'm going with, with mink oil so that the interior will match the exterior. With the inner liner, this is the part that folds in and out and bills coming in and out of. I'm noticing a little bit of scratchy dryness here. And now I believe this is from when I used to heat stamp these logos. So that's to be expected, but I am not gonna hit it with the mink oil because it doesn't need to be darkened. I am gonna use the Aussie leather conditioner. This has a little bit of synthetic in it, but mostly it's beeswax, neat's foot oil, and it doesn't really change the color. It rejuvenates it. But what I'm gonna do on this bee specifically, just on this little section, is I'm gonna do a little bit of what's called hot stuffing. Now, what you can do, what we'll do on the rest of the pieces, is we'll just apply some of the conditioner. We'll let it sit for five minutes to soak in, we'll wipe it off, and we'll buff it. But with this piece, right in here, I want to make sure that that oil penetrates through. Now I could use my mink oil, but I want the wax. The wax is the key here. So I have a heat gun on low, and I'm gonna go very far away and just get a little heat in there. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna get that wax right into, and you'll see it darken up. There we go. It's gonna get that wax into those fibers so that now it's basically soaked all the way through and all of that um, dryness that I felt is gone. However, I didn't do the whole piece, so we'll get a fresh towel. You can use a rag too. I'm just kind of using a towel to show you what comes off, what doesn't when you're doing this. And this piece is now good to go. Now we do usually glue this part, this liner, to our exterior. I am not doing anything to the exterior, like I said. It is perfectly fine. I don't want to mess up the patina. And the, um, I believe this gentleman's name is Alex. And Alex takes very good care of the outside of this, whether he conditions it or holds it or whatever. Um, there's no need to do anything to the outside of this. So. We're gonna do we're gonna do a little bit of glue and we're gonna reattach the liner to the exterior shell. And I'm just gonna do a little dab. We are gonna change the color of the stitching. A lot of the times, if you get a wallet into refurbish that's been made out of natural veg tan and has this much patina on it, doing a bright white stitching just if the customer wants it, obviously we'll go for it. But it's my opinion that we should probably darken the stitching up to match the look of this wallet. Once it's rejuvenated, it's gonna look like a whole new piece and we want that stitching to not stick out. We want it to blend in so that the leather stands out. So we'll throw a little bit of, um, we're using the barge, what is this one? This is the Toluene free one. Just a little, let that dry and then we can get to that when it's done. So the last step for the interiors, I'm going to apply our the Feebing's Aussie Wax or Aussie Conditioner to all the pockets. And I'm gonna let it sit. It's about 70, 72 degrees in here. I'm gonna let it sit on here, soak in a little bit, not hot stuff it. We don't need that much aggressive absorption. Um, this is a well taken care of wallet tells me that the owner knows what they're doing. 
So we're just getting deep into these pockets where you wouldn't usually be able to get unless you took a wallet apart, since we took the wallet apart. And I'm gonna throw just a light coat on these. They don't really need it, but it'll shine them up a little bit. Now for this, uh, for the inside shell, which is, this is the part that all the pockets are attached to, I am gonna do, I've already put some conditioner on. I'm gonna put a little extra conditioner. This is where it folds in half. And I'm only gonna, I am gonna hit it with a heat gun, but only for like 10 seconds. Because I did notice just a little bit of drying. Just a little bit. And it seems silly, but what that'll do is it just gets that wax in there just enough so that when the wallet's opening, closing, opening, closing, opening, closing, this is gonna be your first failure point in the leather if you don't keep it conditioned. So we're gonna wait for five minutes, we'll come back, we'll clean all this off, and then we'll sew it all back up together. I don't wanna to add too much change too quickly to this channel, but I did get a stool so that I can sit while I work sometimes, so. Fair warning, I'm gonna be a little more cozy. Not all the time, sometimes. Figured six and a half years of standing. Non-stop. Non-stop. Haven't sat down since. I haven't sat down in six years, yeah. Gained 40 pounds, standing up. Amazing how that works. So what I'm doing now is I'm going through with just a paper towel and I'm kind of taking off the excess now that it's been sitting, but I'm also rubbing it in at the same time, if that makes sense. So ideally I want to be rubbing this excess into the leather, but if it comes off on the paper towel, that's fine. And you can see through all these steps, we're just getting some more dirt off. This isn't patina. You're not gonna take, if you end up taking color off of a wallet, you're taking off dirt. You're not, there's no way, like if I wanted to make this the color of natural veg tan again, you couldn't do it because the leather tans like skin. So anything you're seeing is just uh, dirt. You're just cleaning off the wallet. And it will look a little bit different if you go this intense with it and like totally take apart a wallet. Uh, we have a bag next that we're gonna show you that we're not taking anything apart. We're just showing you how to condition a bag. Um, this is a little bit more intense, but I wanted to show you, I wanted to use this piece because we do a lot of little repairs now that we've been in business for so long and thread just only lasts so long. Um, but it's a good opportunity to show you levels of finishing like we're doing like this is a piece that needs absolutely nothing done to it. This is a piece that needs minimal stuff to it. This is a piece that perhaps needs a little bit of hot stuffing for uh, folding points and stuff, you know? So it's a good piece to show you kind of, it runs the gamut of different ways to take care of your leather. And we're really only using these two products. Um, mink oil, which you can switch out for Neat's Foot Oil. Um, Phoebing's Aussie conditioner. I'm a big fan of Oben the Obenoff's line as well, the heavy duty LP. That's really good if you're doing like lifting belts, um, fire equipment for firefighters, um, linemen stuff, anything weight bearing. They've been using that stuff for years and years and years. That stuff's great as well. So now that everything is cleaned off, um, what I'm gonna do with these interior pockets is I'm just gonna take a horsehair brush and just buff them out a little bit. Nothing too crazy. They're into your pockets. They don't need to be super shiny. Um, and they will shine right back up within a week or two of having cards in them and being used. So now it's reassembly time. And you don't have to do this, but I love to do this on every single piece that I do. This is gonna be hidden, so I'm just gonna write re uh, 11. Nope, 12. 8, 22, Eric, perfecto. I'm going to just use my roller here, set that glue, but I'm not going to hold it flat. This wallet's been bent in half for eight years. Things are stretched and not stretched and we don't want to mess with them. So there we go. We have our exterior, we have our interior with our liner sewn in. We're gonna go with a uh, main thread. This is their E-Crew color. We always use the 0.35 because it fits our stitching holes in our dies nicely. And I think this will be a nice color to complement this. Um, we want the patina to stand out. We don't want it to, we don't want bright white thread here. So Alex didn't specify thread color. Sometimes people want bright blue, sometimes people send in wallets that aren't even broken to have them re-sewn. We're happy to do it. 
um, if you want to change the stitching on your wallets, but that's why we make our production work like this. You'll see very little glue um, using mostly the strength of the thread because the glue is not usually there. If you have like a stitchlets, a stitchlets watch band, mm -hmm. that's what it is. Um, you know, then your glue is doing most of your heavy lifting. Obviously it's holding the thing together. But with a sewn piece like this, the glue really isn't, the glue is just the third hand. So we will glue this top, but the rest of it, we're just gonna do like we always do and just sew it all together so that in nine or 10 years, if Alex needs another repair, he can send it back in, get it redone again. And it is interesting. Um, I know a lot of you guys wanna make this a career and I can say, one of the most fulfilling parts of having a career this long is this part of it. I think people think that your piece is breaking is a bad thing. And I don't think that at all. I think that if you prioritize building your pieces in a way that they can be repaired with really high quality materials like this thread, you know how it takes a lot to break this thread. So to know that we've been able to be around long enough to have a wallet like this be out in the wild, worn, used, loved, and to be sent back and to be able to be repaired and then to go out back into the world and have that life all over again, I think that's a really special thing about being in this business this long. Um, unless you're using subpar materials, it should never be looked down upon that your piece was used so much that it broke. Um, wear happens. We're using nat leather's natural material and as you can see, actually, this is not natural. This is a poly thread, so the leather was fine. <laughs> it's just the, uh, the abrasion of going in and out of a pocket, which is just the nature of a wallet. It's just gonna happen. But with the, if you saddle stitch, you can easily repair. I mean, we definitely didn't need to, re we could have just cut the thread and re-sewn that one spot, but I wanted to really give this wallet a nice treatment because these look so beautiful when they're fully redone. And so here we go, here's our fully rejuvenated piece. You can see we added a little bit of color, but everything's looking a lot more healthy. And it's also, the nice thing about this ecru thread with the patina is it looks like it's white thread that's worn down. So it doesn't look like brown thread, which is nice. Um, so this is a little bit more of an intense way of leather care. Um, following this, we're gonna show you how to just take care of a simple bag with this one single product. You guys re might remember this bag. This is the, um, the vintage bag we took apart and then made our own. My mom's actually been carrying this for the last, I don't know, six, seven months, and it's never been conditioned. So this is natural Herman Oak Edge Tan with no oil, nothing, just wear. And this is my favorite way to patina a product because what you do is we're gonna get a much more contrasty patina now that we're gonna hit it with oil. We've let it get just a bit chalky. So on the back, it's a bit more oily because it touches her, she touches it. But on the front, you'll notice it's more dry. Now, even, it's, even though it's the flap, the reason is with a wallet, you're constantly touching it and the oil from your hands keeps it hydrated. You very rarely actually have to condition a wallet. But with bags, you can see here, we have some folding starting and we wanna catch that because if we let that go, that's where eventually down the line a few years, that's where our cracks are gonna happen. So we don't, so we have options, right? We can use our mink oil and that'll darken our leather, but we don't wanna do that. We're gonna stick with just the Aussie paste. It's got a little bit of synthetics in it, but for the most part, it's beeswax. Uh, it's got neat's foot oil. It does have a little mink oil in it. And it's a nice paste wax to use when you wanna keep a pretty neutral color, but you want to really uh, saturate the leather because it's gonna be used hard. Like my mom uses this bag every day. She throws it around. She's a child of the 60s, you know? So she uses this bag like she used the ones that she owned in the 60s. So you can see here what I'm doing is I'm really massaging this in. And we could do two things. We could just apply it or we could hot stuff it. Now hot stuffing it is using a heat gun. So we'd apply it, then we'd use a heat gun to melt it into the leather. The problem with that is I don't wanna oversaturate this. Sorry. I don't wanna oversaturate this leather because it's not super, super dry. There is a little bit of moisture in it. Um, it's not a repair, it's nothing like that. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a coat of this Aussie wax and I'm gonna give it a little massage, you know? And I apply with my hands because this stuff is actually, if you're working with your hands all the time, this stuff is great for your hands, great for your skin, especially in winter time. Um, 
I swear I get by without any cracks in my hands because half, you know, part of our job is applying this stuff almost every day to things. So I'm gonna just do the top of this first. I'm gonna work in sections. I'm gonna do the top, then I'm gonna do the sides, then I'm gonna do the front. And once I apply it, I'm gonna set it aside and I'm gonna let it sit for five to 10 minutes depending on the temperature, the temperature of your workspace. So we're right about 70 degrees. And because this is, um, there's wax in this, the heat of your space is also going to is going to be one of the controlling factors of how uh, liquid this wax is, and so we want to make sure that that has ample time to soak in. Um, but we don't want it to like totally soak through and make it all sloppy and stuff because you can over oil leather. You don't want to go super super crazy. We have wallets. We've have had wallets sent back. That have actually started to mold because they've just been oiled and oiled and oiled and oiled and old oiled they never dry out and then they get moldy because leather is a natural material and it's kind of like uh, if you're into selvage denim you don't want to wash it a lot you don't want to wash them a lot but if you don't wash them at all the fibers get brittle so you do have to wash them eventually that's kind of the balance we're looking to strike with a bag like this where we really want to focus on a nice patina but we don't want to harm the leather in any way. So I'm giving the strap a coat as well. And then I've taken this apart and we're just gonna give this a little coat. And at this point, because this bag has been used, if you wanna put a little coat on the back, you don't have to, but it's not gonna hurt anything. And I'm getting it all over the hardware, all over everything. It's not gonna do anything once we clean it all off. It's not gonna take any of the patina off. Um, if anything, it's wax and oil so it's going to make the sliders there they work fine because they're buckle guy pieces but it'll just probably smooth this out a little bit like wd-40 or something so we're going to let that set for five minutes and then we're going to buff it with a cotton cloth and so once it's been about five minutes it's had time to sink in but you can still see we have some sitting at the top that's what we want we don't want the leather sunk all the way through sorry we don't want the conditioner sunk all the way through because then we're just putting too much moisture in the fibers and risking mold i'm just going to take a paper towel and remove as much of the excess as i can you might need a couple of these, a couple of paper towels, and it'll start to get a shine here. And actually this is when I will go ahead and use the paper towels that I've set down to not get wax and oil all over my bench. We'll kind of just go one by one here, using them up. And don't remember, or don't forget, you can also just stick your hand in the bag and kind of polish it up that way. Now on an older bag, I'm gonna be honest with you, sometimes you don't need a cotton rag. You can get a nice shine with just the paper towel and then we'll hit it with a horse hair brush after this and it's good to go because my mom's sitting right there. We have to go to the hardware store and she's gonna put all of her stuff back in this in about five minutes and keep using it every day for the next year. So we like to be a little tougher with our stuff because, well not on purpose, we're not throwing it around, but I think you get a much better patina if you don't baby it. So that one's good. This one needs just a quick wipe down. As does this one. And that's it. So there's a quick little leather detail. Do that maybe once a year, maybe twice a year with your bags. If they're not, um, if they're natural veg tan, if it's a harness leather, hot stuff leather, something that's dyed or treated, you really probably only need to do it once a year. And this stuff will not usually, remember this is natural veg tan, so the, shell, the color is changed, but it's also still a little damp. Most leathers that are dyed, this will not change the color of, but test a spot first that you can't see so that you know what you're getting into. All I'm gonna do now is hit it with a little horsehair brush. And we're not polishing a pair of Aldens. We're just getting a little shine back into this um, because the conditioner will dull down the natural patina shine that's developed. Basically, as you wear a piece of leather, you're burnishing it, just like you would burnish the edge of a piece of leather with cloth. Um, and so we want to get that shine back because you worked hard to earn it. So that's really all it takes. We can get, I don't know if you can get the shine from there, hopefully, you know. And over the next week or two, it'll shine right back up to where it was before. And now, with a little movie magic, I already did the front of the bag. So you can see. I don't know if I'll be able to put a before and after, but we're looking gorgeous. All we have to do is reapply 
strap, which going by the marks goes there. And here. And my mom is sitting in the background, ready to go. So we're out of here. And so that's gonna be basically it. Our guide to leather care is wear the stuff hard, treat it once or twice a year when it needs it, don't treat it when it doesn't, and you'll end up with beautifully patinaed pieces. Um, I prefer the Phoebings line. I like mink oil more than I like Needs Foil, but Needs Foil is great as well. Um, I love the Phoebings Aussie Wax. We use this on everything. And as far as mom's bag is concerned, she's already back to using it. And with Alex's wallet, we're gonna put it in a fresh dust bag and send it back off to him. So if you do have one of our pieces and you need it re-sewn, um, we offer free lifetime repairs if it's broken and we're happy to re-sew it even if it's not broken for a small fee. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, links in the description to all of the leather care products that we use from Buckle Guy and we'll see you in the next one.